everyone. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 6 of the Film Bros Championship Podcast. I am Tim, and with me is my co-host, Patrick. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> it, it makes me cringe uh. just hearing you do it. And is it because I'm so bad at it? Or? No, and I was wondering, like, if some people are going to be like, is he trying to do, like, a weird Mickey Mouse impression or something? He's like, no, that's that's pretty close to what this... There is a moment in this movie where he legit sounds like Mickey Mouse. Oh. Yeah, like, exactly. It, it gets exactly. pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Giggles. Dr. Giggles. Is, is, is our episode today, and wow. It's kind of interesting. Like I, I remember seeing the poster, but I've I've never seen the movie before. Nor and, I. First for and, me. Yeah, and uh, I, whatever. My coworker was like, "Oh, so what did you guys watch the new episode?" And I was like, "Doctor Giggles," and he's like, "Is that the one like the villain from Dark Man?" I was like, "How did you like pull that out?" Like I'm impressed. <laughs> like, <laughs> not bad. Yeah, good for him, right? Larry Drake. Is Dr. Giggles. Yes. Yes, he is. Um, this is your pick. Yeah, sorry. So yeah, you get to uh take us take us take a stroll with us here. Patrick, let us know what it is, Dr. Giggles. Uh Dr. Giggles is about a crazy man who believes he's a doctor, and if that wasn't enough, he's also out for revenge. Uh, <laughs> and uh, on a whole town mm. for the death of his father, who actually was a doctor. Right. And yeah, that's all you need to know. I I don't know about you, but I was I was confused about the town name. Morehead was was it again? Yeah, I, I think it was More High. And. For some, because I guess I knew yeah, the more high. basic plot of the movie, and I knew it involved high school kids. It sure does. And so, when they said more high and such, I'm thinking they're talking about a high school. Ah, you're it's gonna, more high, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, no. One word. It's on the map right there in the beginning of the movie. I know, and it's weird. I feel dumb because my comment and note was, "Why is a high school on the map?" Oh, that's bad, Tim. It's not I, good. I know it's a it's a ditzy moment, but but and what's worse is how long I took that in my notes to eventually be like, oh, the town is more because I'm like, why does he want revenge on the high school? Where does the high school come in? And even the backstories for Doctor Giggles, I'm like, well, what did the high school do him? And I'm not. I'm like, <laughs> Didn't you watch this in the middle of the afternoon? This is not. Yeah, this I have no well excuse. At all. I have no excuse. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> okay. It was a nice ditzy moment. I'm coming clean. I'm being honest. It was not my best moment. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I guess we'll get into it. Sure. I. The depressing thing is we have to start off with Hero. Yep. She's a nothing. Yeah. Really is. So so this movie. Uh, it is aptly named. It is all about our villain, yes. Dr. Giggles. You really could pre- It probably would have made more sense if we pretended he was the hero and it's a tragic story or something. Right. Uh, <laughs> but it's... Yeah. Okay. So our hero, for, hero is Jennifer, I guess. She's our final girl. Yeah, and you don't, you don't get her for a little bit. You, I mean, it, it takes... No, like, because the yeah. movie is more interested in Dr. Giggles. Dr. Giggles, by the way, seven, a body count of 17 people murdered in this movie not bad that is that is massive yeah especially for a first time horror movie yeah and it's impressive he he definitely has some teleportation powers but we'll get to that later i guess <laughs> but um but yeah you said jennifer right i mean that's how bad it is like i barely remember her name um she has a heart defect or she there's a suspected heart defect at least um and so basically uh she goes in to get this looked into and while they're kind of investigating she's supposed to take it easy which stinks as a 
high school kid out for summer break to have to take it easy and she can't drink or get too excited is the the basic gist of her plot line uh you do eventually get uh because everybody's telling her it's fine it's like a simple procedure if they do have to fix anything but she's scared because her mom went into a simple procedure and died so she's freaked out that that's gonna happen to her i guess and that's about it that's that's yeah that's about as deep as her character ever gets in this movie I want to go back to the 17 dead bodies in this movie. Oh, well, that, should we save that real for quick. the villain? I just want to point this out real quick. Okay. Uh, it took Jason Voorhees um, like eight tries to get up to 17. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't until my man took Manhattan that he got up to 17 kills. And he had them all trapped on a boat at first. And he went into a city with 8 million people. Yeah, well, so. <laughs> I guess to be fair, Dr. Gilgles was doing this at a very early age. It, it, you know. I don't think any of the early stuff counts on Giggles' uh, body count. I don't know because. He doesn't kill anybody as a kid. Are we sure about that? 100%. Because. Now that we know of in the movie. I don't know because I thought they said at one point that the son was helping him. I don't think he did any of the, I think he was helping with the surgeries, like the post dead bodies, the pulling the hearts out and stuff. Okay. Uh, but that's just theory and everything too. But we don't ever see him He's kill an anybody accomplice. as a kid. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, but still, 17 kills. Is, it's a lot. This is what this movie is. This movie is a slasher, but it's in like the worst kind where we you do not care about anybody else in this movie. Yeah. It's all about giggles, and we're just here for the the gore and which isn't that impressive it's not yeah i mean because yeah i mean it purposely is trying to have fun it is it's trying to have some humor with itself it's a comedy it, this is a comedy yeah but it's not yeah. in a fun amazing dead alive creative sort of way that it legitly is funny this is just like every time it happens you're rolling your eyes and going oh god um like yeah well, unless me. it's We'll definitely get into that yeah. later. You're right. Sorry. Um, yeah, we're still so, in Hero. Yeah, Jennifer, we're already bored to talk about. I know. Because uh, she's got zero personality to herself. She's very mopey. What's weird is that she wants to keep this all to herself and not tell anybody at first. So she's just being a jerk. Yeah. Like, she, you know, Max... Wants to her boyfriend the wants boyfriend. to you know yeah. enjoy the weekend, get Doyle. drunk, get laid. We'll get into that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, get laid and have a good time at the fair. And she's like, "I'm sad." And he's like, "Well, can you tell me why?" She what? eventually no. tells him. Eventually, yeah, and then she it takes dishes him at the fair without telling him. Yeah, she's like, "I'm gone." <laughs> like, what the hell? This is a real jerk move. And then you know, Max takes his own turn being a massive jerk. So yeah, and fair gets, fair, re- gets rewarded for it too. But we'll get to that later. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, the first bit of Jennifer is her at the doctor's office where she's getting all the bad news, good news, whatever you want to call it. Right. It's all going to be fine, but she's worried about it. Uh, she, I guess she took a shortcut through a national forest going from I her doctor's office to Giggle's thing. house. Yeah, I thought the like, same what thing. What the hell? I don't know. It's like, where are we and why are we in the middle of the woods? And then, like, the next scene is like, now we're on a normal street? I'm very confused. Is this like a weird random cul-de-sac? <laughs> I don't it's, get it. Yeah. I mean, the, the house is set up in a park, the Dr. Giggles mansion, right. whatever you want to call it. That's where they built it so they could blow it up. But people uh, walk but it's, by it's, it. They're walking their dogs around it. Yeah, but it's, it's part of the neighborhood. It's so weird. But it doesn't look like the rest like of this. the neighborhood at all. No, no. It's been untouched for yeah, since It's basically... Giggles- Here's the neighborhood Left. on location, and here's Giggles' house on stage, and it's very obvious. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, and and oh, and I'll point this out too. Uh, Giggles is not the only one doing all the doctor puns in this movie, of which there are so many untold amounts. It is. Uh, she sl- she starts off like like I don't know, maybe the. F- Fifth, sixth line we have of her in this movie saying an apple day keeps the doctor away. Like, God Oh, uh, yeah. I think she does it as she's leaving the house or something. Yeah. 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 It's it's not great. And and there's... She's not a good... Um, she's not a good character, man. She's just... She's mean. She's mopey. 
she doesn't ever kind of like have any kind of humor or sense of humor to herself. She's never anybody that like really takes charge until like the very, very end of the movie, basically. Um, and, and it's just a blah. It's just, it's, it's a terrible character. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even want to go into it anymore. Oh, wow. I know. I wonder how, like, is it? I, it's got to be. Does she do a lot between this and Charmed? I'm assuming there's got to be some stuff in there. That Holly Marie Combs, who plays Jennifer, yeah. Because I'm uh, assuming there's got to be something there to help her out to eventually land Charmed. Because it's like, this is woof. Well, she was on Picket Fences. It was like a nighttime soap. Yeah. Okay. And basically, from there, she got to Charmed. Okay. Yeah, she was started on Picket Fences like the same uh, year as Dr. Gulls came out and then went to Charm like two years later. Man. And I believe Picket Fences has our boy Tom Skerritt in it, oh, our wow. very Italian man. Yeah. I wonder I wonder if Charm was kind of like, we just spent a lot of money on Doherty. This is this is the best we can do right now. <laughs> Probably not far off. Yeah. I mean you know, she, she she was a pro. Yeah, no, yeah, no. I, and especially at that time, I feel like Doherty was kind of a big get. No, Doherty was a big get. She was the star of the show. Well, her and Alyssa Milano. I yeah. Mean, they were... No, for sure. Yeah, that's why I'm like that. Whatever is left over, this one, this one will do. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. It's just not ba- like I don't. You don't blame the actress for any of this. Like, there's like literally nothing for her to do. I guess that's fair. There's nothing. Yeah. That there's, there's no character. There's there nothing is, for her to do other than be sad no. and run. I was That's very it. confused at one point because later on, um, she does go through lots of stress in this movie, and she's not she's <laughs> yeah. not supposed to, but she does. And um, or drink alcohol, which she also does by herself. Also does, which nothing comes of that Ooh. ever. And, and so nothing comes of her drinking alcohol. Nothing comes of her being stressed out. Well, no, because yeah. like, eventually at the end of the movie, they say, like, well, it's, it's come to the point where we have to give you surgery. And then, yeah, I guess because it's like, because she's under observation. And for some odd reason, this town doesn't have a hospital or the hospital's far enough away because no. she's just at her doctor's office getting looked after or at the sheriff's office getting looked after. I don't know which one it is. A doctor came to her or something. It was weird. Doctor came to her at the sheriff's office, then brought her back to his office so he can give her an EKG. Yeah, and it I, sounds I had like double check that this morning. He's and she he the doctor's like, "Yeah, you're fine." Yep. So somehow with the rest of the part of the movie that whatever little bit happens that we'll talk about later is enough to all of a sudden surgery is necessary where it seemed like surgery wasn't going to be necessary in that moment. But she even when she needs the surgery, she's still able to have one final fight with the bad guy. Yeah. Defeat him. She seems fine. It's really weird. It really like it really feels like it should be something that's like really ups the stakes and it makes you worried as an audience and all that and really sucks you in like oh no. And it's a really all it is is a plot device to make the villain interested in her. Just to keep her in a hospital setting is really that and that too. Well, but yeah, yeah, you're right. And that's it. And otherwise, there's 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 something that could have been used there to make it an interesting part of the movie, and they didn't care at all. Yeah. So, no, you're, so you're no. right. It is mostly a writing fault. They didn't care about this character. It shows. It's a one. It sucked. Yeah. Well, let's, let's get to our real hero of this movie, the villain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Giggles. Um, Doctor Giggles. Yeah. Uh, it's His a nickname, nickname. yeah, uh, which given to him at the psychiatric hospital he's in in the beginning of the movie. No one there knows his real name. He thinks he's a doctor and has a genius IQ, but he's actually Evan Rendell Jr. And he's always wanted to be a doctor like his dad. Uh, his mom had a heart condition, which drove his father insane, led him to kidnapping innocent people and removing their hearts because he wanted to figure out how to do a heart transplant. Yeah. The town figures it out and drags him out of the house and stones him to death. Giggles escapes and vows revenge on the town. Okay, the more, okay, now that I'm repeating it, I'm angry again. <laughs> it's like they, the, 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 when they made this, they realized they wanted to combine Freddy and Jason into one character. Yeah, I get that. And give him doctor puns. He's got like Plenty a very of. similar Freddy origin story, but he's got like all of Jason's powers and jokes that Arnold Schwarzenegger and Roger Moore wouldn't barely would 
Never Arnold uttered. would cringe at it. So would Roger Moore. He would be upset yeah. by these jokes. You're right. They're, it's it's real bad. Um, I am very confused on a few things. <laughs> um, Clearly, buddy. Yeah. No, but like, so he disappears. Nobody knows what happens to him. No, we could do a Giggles prequel movie. I had no idea. I, I'm, it's new information hearing from you is telling me that the hospital themselves did not know who he was. Some of the first bits of dialogue from a person who wasn't Dr. Giggles. So regardless, right? He's John Doe he's and he's in there. clearly, yeah, John Doe in a medical institution. Psychiatric hospital. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so... Um, there is this like weird like plot device where they're trying to figure out something and it really goes nowhere where he does connect giggles here to the psychiatric uh, breakout incident police report. Yeah, Officer Reitz, the rookie cop, figures it right. out later on. But you're right. But that has no it has no it has, it means nothing. Like it, it should have been this eureka moment, but it really meant nothing. And it also goes into how. Uh, this backstory of how he did make it out of that stoning incident and how he disappeared and then how all of it was covered up. By him. Was it him? And then he goes into the ward himself? I don't know what happens to him. He's a crazy person, so eventually he gets caught and put in an insane asylum. But, is, yeah. Is that what we're going with? We're just loose? I mean, none of it makes sense. Like, it is, it is, that is some gobbledygook. Okay, so I'm skipping ahead here. Eventually, <laughs> one of the cops tells a story uh, yeah. to the rookie cop and explains that he was there the night uh, after Rendell was killed. And he had to look, you know, they were short-staffed and he had to stay by himself to look after all the bodies at the morgue. And that's when uh, <laughs> Kid Giggles... Yeah. Uh, Saws his way out of his mother's body with yeah. the scalpel that his dad gave him. Apparently, his dad sewed him in there. Yeah, I don't says, know from what, how you sewing them from the back. I don't. That's what I was wondering yeah, too. Doesn't that, make any sense. Nope. I don't know how he had air because he's in there for multiple hours. Obviously. Yep. Uh, but <laughs> he, he he saws his way out, and he says, "When uh, when I woke, he passes out from the horror of seeing this kid like scalpel his way out of his mother's womb." Um. And he's like 10, maybe 12 years old. He's not small. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> and he passes out from the horror of seeing this. And when he comes to, he says, the body was sewn up again. Everything was cleaned up and there was no trace. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah, which is insane to me. And he didn't tell anybody because nobody would believe him. Because to me, I thought this kid was more like eight or nine, if anything. But, like, there's no sure, way I this... I mean, they do show at one point in <laughs> he's flashbacks... He's prepubescent. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> they do show at one point in flashbacks that he's, like, sewing up dolls and stuffed animals. But, like, come on, this kid... I don't know. I get it. It's a ridiculous horror movie, but still, like, it was... To me, I'm like, wait a minute. How is this getting covered up? How does he get to the, the, the ward? Like, what? Like, I don't know. It threw me. Uh, I think at this point when we find all that information, I no longer really cared. That's a movie very good me. point because you do find out way later. Yeah, how all they, this kind they of piecemeal works. all this information to you. Yeah, because and, and I and I swear the when the um the cop finds the piece of clothing to where he finally connects it to the ward thing is like such a gap between those things happening that it's like oh yeah I guess I forgot about that. And then, like, and then he's like, again, re- Eureka moment. I'm like, well, why does that matter? How does that, like, it literally doesn't. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so yeah. somehow in the beginning of this movie, Giggles has released a lot of the patients in this psychiatric hospital. Yeah, he's got uh, kind of like a Joker moment going on here. And he's just finished murdering a doctor on an operating table while the other patients watch. Not sure why a psychiatric hospital would have an operating theater. No, that, that's, yeah, yeah. that's a bit weird. It, it's part-time medical uh, education school. I don't know, medical school. It's weird. <laughs> um, and more Freddy, you know, ripping off Freddy stuff. 
Mm. Uh, we have a rhyme for him. Yeah. The town has created a rhyme. Yep. Town has got a doctor, and his name is Rendell. Stay away from his house because he's the doctor from hell. He chopped up his patients, every last one. Now he cuts out their hearts purely for fun. So if you're from more high and you should get sick, fall on your knees and pray you die quick. Yeah. Wasn't there an end part to that too? No, that's it. No, what pray did they what was the mantra that they kept saying? Like, don't go, don't look into it or don't I gotta look at my notes. I have no idea what you're talking about. I, but anyway, I'll not quite as catchy as one, two, Freddy's coming for you, you know? Oh, it's yeah. just like, well, God. Obviously. It's like they just watch these two franchises and like, I can do this and just mush them together. <laughs> <laughs> uh. um, and then Giggles has the same slow walk oh. and teleportation powers as Jason. Don't go chasing nursery rhymes. That's what it was. They kept saying, don't go chasing nursery rhymes. I guess because giggles, they're telling like well, because the thing people. right that you just went through, they said it like three times almost after it said each time, don't go chasing nursery rhymes. But yeah, no, the teleportation thing, right? So like I, I didn't quite. It doesn't become quite as ridiculous until like after the funhouse stuff, right? And the mm-hmm. and and the police and sheriffs are mm-hmm. like. Oh, no, there's something more ridiculous earlier on, but yeah. Okay, so anyway, that I think this is when it reaches its zenith, at least for me. I don't know. like So they're at, um, the, the Funhouse stuff um, is ended, that scene's ended, so Giggles has been on the rampage for a bit, right? So yeah. already at this point, he's killed several, like many people already, right? It's probably the double digits by then. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and he's, you know, he's, he's a big guy. He's he, you know he's tall and stuff. He's broad shouldered, I guess, but he's he's not a physically fit dude by any by any stretch of the imagination, right? Sure, but like Larry Drake is like six foot three. No, he's a big dude. You know? That's what I'm saying. He's yeah. big, he's a pretty big dude. The six, six three is big. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. had to be someone who could be on the screen with Liam Neeson convincingly. Yeah, no, so. <laughs> totally, totally get that, right? But still, even though he's like a big dude, he's not like. I would wouldn't say athletic or anything. At one point, they try to show him walking down a hill, and he's struggling to walk down a hill. Uh, <laughs> yeah. After the fun house, she falls down the hill, and then he's struggling to walk okay, down it. Okay, let's get into that real quick. By the way, okay. I think that's the one time in horror movie history where the girl deciding to run off into the woods by herself actually brought her to safety instead of going to like where people are. Yeah, which was much closer. Yeah, it's a good so, point. Congratulations for pulling off history. It's got something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so anyway, he's killed so many people, including in that fun house. Yeah. Right? And, the house, and she, it's a house of mirrors. Not yeah. Really a fun well, whatever. Yeah. She managed to get away even after her, her falling down the hill and him struggling to walk down the hill to her or whatever. Still, still manages to, uh, to get away from him and all that kind of stuff. Um, and you get to the sheriff station and they're immediately like, oh, whatever, like it's your imagination or whatever. And you find out like nobody's found a single dead body. And you're like, what? How? Well, there's a re- there's a reason for that. It's right. quite impressive. And then yeah. you see later all, you know, like why that is. And you're like, there's no way. This is the most insane thing ever. Like how quick and fast is he? He's teleporting yeah. bodies. Screw it. Let's say it. He's been somehow transporting almost every body he kills. Uh to his waiting room in his house. Yeah. Because there's like a makeshift doctor's office in the basement of this house. And he's just been bringing every single dead body. He doesn't have a car. Well, he does. But I don't, we never see it again see. after he uses it at the beginning of the movie. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After he escapes with it. Yeah. He never uses it again. Not yeah, that we ever, ever see, see it. it but he must, be, he must have it. He must be parked behind the back of the house or something. It must I don't know be. how he's getting all these dead bodies back to the house. It, it must be a combination of that car and this is the smallest town more high ever or something because it's it's insane how he could like especially the way he kills some of these people and leave no evidence and disappear with these bodies and do heart stuff to these bodies and then get on to his next kill like it is like some that's some next level impressive stuff like this is this is over jason Voorhees. like it is kind of crazy like Jason doesn't even do this kind of time trial stuff. <laughs> no, no. Uh, anyway, so at one point, we'll get into the details later, but after killing uh, Jen's stepmom, 
Yeah. <laughs> Giggles discovers Jen's heart monitor and heart literature, and then he's now totally focused on just her because he reminds her of his mom. Right. So, got to give her a new heart. Sure. He's going to complete the mission that his dad wasn't able to finish, so he's he's going to do that now. All of a sudden, he cares about that, which mm. clearly did not at all before. <laughs> uh, yeah, before he's just grabbing hearts because it was fun. Uh, yeah, I guess. I, yeah, that's another thing. Like, when did he start cutting the hearts out? Well, that's something his dad did, so I'm assuming he was always doing it anyway. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I I love the scene where Giggles performs surgery on himself. Oh yeah, you didn't put that. I put that in action. You put it. <laughs> um, yeah, he's giggling uh, the whole time while, while is, doing it. This is where he is at his most Mickey Mouse and yes. his giggling. Yes, and it's really funny. He has one glove. Uh, he has two different gloves on. Two different yeah. color gloves. One is the nurse's glove to hand himself the scalpel and whatever else he needs to get the bullet out of him because he's been shot. Yeah. <laughs> and at, at one point, too, he pulls, like, like actual, like, guts or intestines or something out. And he basically goes, oops, not that. And then shoves it back in. And it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> and then he says, physician, heal thyself, which yes. is like, oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so favorite uh, Giggles lines. Um, Wait, how many of them do you have? Not many. Okay, because these, I, these I put a lot just... of them into. Okay, these... I put a lot of them into action. Okay, so these so... are your favorite lines that are just villain specific, and not action specific. Is that what you're going with? Pretty much. Okay. The problem with talking about Giggles is like, whenever he's on screen, he's probably murdering somebody. That's a very good point. Yeah. That's why there are 17 kills in this movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of like. Giggles information is going to come through action. It's a good point. But here's the ones that don't involve him killing anybody. Um, so we got the uh, laughter is the best medicine, which I guess is why he decides to giggle all the time. I guess. Yeah. Well, sure. That whole scene in the flashback, the flashbacks are rough, but <laughs> there, there is one flashback where the father is really distraught about the mother and their they're like kind of leaning over the mother and then like, she's like basically on her deathbed or something. And then the father just starts laughing. Yeah. And then that's when the son starts laughing. So it's like, this is supposed to be like the origin of the laughter, I guess. I don't know. Sure. Didn't make yeah. much sense. It was dumb. <coughs> anyway. Um, and then, uh, the other one I have is, uh, <laughs> possibly the best scene in the movie. No, no, that comes in action. Um, uh, the best joke, uh, that's said a line anyway, is uh, Giggles is being hunted in the house, in his house, yeah. by a bunch of people, and it's all dark, pitch black, he's by himself, and he says, it's time to do what doctors do best, and he grabs a golf club. Yeah. Yeah. There's a <laughs> golf bag, and he grabs a golf club. Uh, so, there was another one. That wasn't quite action, and that was after an, uh, an action kill, uh, and and there's a younger sibling in the house. Terminal. Yeah, who's exactly yes. He's, yeah, yeah, I have this one in action. I'm gonna go you, into the. I don't think. Oh yeah, I don't think that was only an action because moment. I have to go through the whole ridiculous scene. It is. It is insane. Beyond insane. Yeah, you're. I mean, yeah, it's nuts. And of course, uh, this kid, by the way, we'll get to it, but he's playing Dr. Mario, too. With a joystick. Which is I didn't think you could bizarre. Do. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, they did have a joystick, but like, why? But to play Dr. Mario. Yeah. yeah no, it's know. not a Jet Fighter game. <laughs> um, anyway, it's tough for me to defend it right now, but I think it'll come through more in action why I gave him this score, but I gave Dr. Eagles a two and a half. I actually also gave him. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I did. I mean, I, I agree with you. I think action will help with it um, <laughs> as much as it is nuts. It is, as you said, beyond insane so much of this movie. But he looks to be the only one that's trying. <laughs> he gets what he's doing. Yes. Yeah, he, he, he understood the assignment. He, no one else really yes, did. He understands the mission. And and he's he's really he's really trying 
He's really giving it his all here. Yeah, he's great. He really is. I just I wish the material was better, but yeah, he's <laughs> it's so bad and so overdone, and there's so much awful around it. There's there's nothing to save it. But at least he's he's the one giving some kind of attempt out of all of this. So yeah, I also yeah. went two and a half. Okay. So let's get into the action stunts, which I have written far too much about. Oh, that's the biggest section, without a doubt. Like this it. is this is like this. All the personality of the movie is in this because because it's most of the movie is just everything kills. is just leading up to the next kill. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. It's everything else is barely any screen time. It's just giggles killing people. And I swear, <laughs> yeah. most of most of my notes goes there's giggles. Here comes giggles. <laughs> like that's yeah. that's how I kept writing it. Um. So we got first off, you got Giggles cutting off the arm of a doctor uh, that he was operating on at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, he cuts them off off screen. Right. But then he brings the arms with him to sneak up behind a nurse and start to fondle her. Yeah. Because the, the nurse is like, "Oh, now is not the right time," or whatever. Then she turns around, freaks out, and he should have kept his hands to himself, and then cuts her throat. Wasn't he like also like, "Oh, he cuts his throat." I was trying to remember if he was like all of a sudden like halfway across the room in that moment too. I was like, what? Or <laughs> the teleportation powers, I guess. But no, 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 those come up a little later. The one thing I do like about that scene, um, at least the idea was cool that I would have liked to see in Incapable Hands, was as they're like looking for giggles, um, in that altercation with the nurse, she knocks on the intercom system. Right. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Which is like, this actually would have been really cool. To like hear this stuff going on as they're trying to find him, but like, yeah. See, the problem with this movie is it tries to play. Well, it wants both. It does. It, it's it's trying to be like a late stage Freddy movie where it's like we're, but there's no, but this is our first introduction to the character. Yeah, it's not earned. So it should have been, it should have been way spoofier if you want to make it a comedy, or they should have really pulled back on it all and made it actually a horror. But it's right. trying to put. It's trying to have feet. it both ways. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's. And, it's like yeah. It's basically it's it's it won't it won't commit fully to being something like Dead Alive, and definitely not enough creative people and special effects to go with that either. Uh, and then it, it won't take itself seriously like like a Freddy or or an early Friday movie or something like that. You know. Yeah. Uh, so then we got next up. You got checkout time. Uh, Giggle sneaks up behind an employee who's leaving the hospital uh, and grabs and twists his arm, cuts his throat, and then uses his key card and car to escape. Yeah. The doctor puns have begun. Oh, boy. <laughs> it it uh, really does almost get towards the end of the movie where it, it, it becomes into um, the great outdoors with John Candy and the steak scene, you know, where he's like, grabbing on he's like please no like, or they tell me he's got to eat the fat yeah, from like, the crystal. no or i can't take another pun like i can't yeah yeah nothing left but uh, grizzle and fat let's stop talking about a movie we like <laughs> it's gonna hurt my feelings fair more. fair 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 uh so uh, we got one of our high school friends trotter and his girlfriend are stuck in a room yeah oh, by the way let's let's um where do i know that guy you don't even look it up. I did. I I was like, he was definitely one of those. Like, I know this person, and this is driving me nuts. And that, but there was so much happening, type of things. So I kept typing, and then I forgot. To My guy, that is Dougie Doug, that Sanka man from Cool Runnings. Oh my god, the Jamaican Bobsa team. Is that before that movie? Was it Cool Runnings like ninety four? Uh, yeah, it's definitely before Cool okay. Runnings. Wow. Okay. That makes sense. Sanka, <laughs> you dead yet? That's the year before Cool Runnings. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's great. Wish I could have had him in the movie more. Yeah. I mean, he was he was funny in the little bit he got to do. I, yeah. but to be honest, I kind of liked the girl, too. Like, Yeah, were, yeah his girlfriend. Not bad. They were doing uh, right. So him and his girlfriend get stuck in uh, in the house, in a room in the ha- in Dr. Giggle's house. Yeah, they get locked in is- by some jerks. A practical joke by uh, our other high school friend, Stu, who decided to play a practical joke on 66% of the black population of this town. Mm. <laughs> These two people. Yeah. <laughs> Although I think he's just trying to get his friend laid is Possibly. his goal. And, yeah. and 
they like go right into the stereotype where she's like grabbing his crotch, like, okay, I'll give you what you wanted to get me out of this room. Yeah, yeah. All right. And all of a sudden he's uh, like, she's like, oh, my shoulder's dislocated. And then she's like, grabs him. He's like, okay, I'll give you one if you get me out of the room. And he's like, all right, let's go. And he starts trying to barge out. I was like, there was actually some good stuff here. And yeah. uh, poor follow through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, unfortunately, you can't get out. And that's when Dr. Giggles appears. Right. They see, they can't, they don't know it's him. They just know somebody's on the other side of the door. Well, they hear the giggle first. Sure, yeah. And then they, uh, Trotter like looks through the keyhole to see if anyone's there. Then he pops his head up, like pretending he's... A, you know, hurt. Right. And that's when, uh, just freak out his girlfriend. That's when Giggles shoves what must be the largest needle known to man yeah. through the keyhole and injects Trotter in the butt with some, like, green liquid, which caused him to just start vomiting blood. Yeah, it almost looked chunky, too. Yeah. What they were vomiting up. And I was just like, that's what I was like. That was my note, too. I was like, what I what was that? I'm just like, what, what medical knowledge has this guy been able to cock up to be able to make this concoction? Like, what was that? I don't know. Uh, where does he even get all this stuff? Right. Because it's like, did, was dad building this stuff up? And like, did like, because clearly somebody owns the home, by the way. But before, or maybe they tried to sell it and then they couldn't sell it. I don't know why, because I have no idea why it was boarded up. The whole medical offices, which I can't wait to talk to about later, uh, were boarded up. Because yeah. that's where you first see Giggles in the town again. It's him breaking through the wall. It's like, why did we board all? Why? Why? Because this is an abandoned home. Like, did someone live here first and try to. Abandon? Anyway. Was this stuff just sitting there? For- All right, st- stop talking. This is, you've gone way off the end. With this so, so basically, you're giving me the Austin Powers. I've gone cross-eyed. Is that what you're- yeah, wrap it up. <laughs> uh, so a woman hears the screaming from the house. And this is where Giggles' teleportation powers go on full blast. Yes. So a woman hears the screams. She walks her dog over to check it out. And then goes back and calls the police and then goes home. Giggles somehow teleports into her home and replaces the nightly sleeping pill or whatever the pill's for yeah. on her counter, which she takes, uh, and it causes her to convulse and spasm, and she has enough energy to call a 911 again and say she needs a doctor. And I think Giggles was just waiting on the other side of the door, waiting for her to just say this line, because then he so. bursts through and was like, you're lucky I make phone uh, house calls. Yeah. <laughs> again like where did that med- he just must have stolen a bunch of stuff when he left the medical hospital that's the only thing I could think of or this is like all like I don't know rotted out medicine his dad had right, <laughs> yeah, in the place right. that nobody touched all I don't know it's so stuff. weird yeah uh, so then you got a, a really cool shot well, he actually. scares her first by the way through the keyhole it was like a thing it was like almost like a scare because you see his eye through the keyhole and that's when she runs away. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. so there was okay. that, that the whole part. Which she was another one that looked familiar, and it took me... That one I actually did look up, sadly. Oh, but I didn't bother for that one. It's Mrs. But... Peeman from The Mask. Okay, it's been a while since I've seen The Mask. Yeah, she's the landlady. Okay, the, I, I, I haven't seen that, that movie. That was really mean to Jim Carrey in the beginning, and... It might be 30 years for me since I've last seen that movie. Thank you. You're too harsh on it, man. It's fun. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I haven't seen it in like 30 years. Okay. Anyway. Revisit. <laughs> uh, so he, he straps her to the uh, a chair. Yeah. And really, like I said, a really cool shot. I guess they made like a, a giant mouth that they could stick a be- uh, camera behind. And they used yeah. a giant tongue depressor. To like, see, you're seeing the shot from the inside of her mouth. It was, it was a nice little bit of uh, filmmaking there. Yeah, it was definitely uh, better than the weird 3D stuff in the beginning of the movie. It must Edging have spent like the body or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> with the blood cells falling uh, through the heart. It, it was must terrible. Have been, must have been a bundle in that, right? Uh, <laughs> they were like, "Look who's talking. Cool, we can do better." No, I don't know. I think for 1992, it probably looked cool. Uh, uh, maybe you know, like, remember, we're gonna see the lawnmower man later, and those effects are much worse. It's a very good point. <laughs> um, anyway, he then grabs a giant probe with like a flashlight on it. I just want to shoves it up this. her nose. Yeah, and I liked gets this kill. Yeah, this one I liked. 
and you see it, which is unlike a lot of the kills, it pulls away. This one, you actually see it. Yeah. So th- and this one was good. This one, I'll give it credit for. I liked it. You and you really you see it going all the way up or whatever. And I was like, all right. Oh no, yeah, it's, it's I like it's this nice. One. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, and then we lead to the most insane part of the movie because now he's just going house to house killing people. That is bold. The most insane part. <laughs> oh no, it's it's not even anything Giggles does really. It's, yeah, everything to do is Stu. Yeah, Stu is a freak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stu. <laughs> Uh, a I guess friend of Jennifer's and Max's. Uh, I guess these all these kids, I guess teenagers, are super weird and awful people, uh, and and oddly weirdly dressed for summer break too. By the way, just put <laughs> Is that it summer out. break. I, I missed that. Yeah, I tell. it's summer break. They're out for summer, and they're oh. wearing like flannel. Well, it's the Pacific Northwest, and it's 1992, so they had to come on. wear that. Um, anyway, let's get into Exception the Exception of the shit. one girl who's clearly the slut and is wearing practically nothing. All right. Well, let's, let's concentrate on Stu, who's Stu, the yes. weird-ass freak. He's weirder than Dr. Giggles. Stu yeah. has stolen his mom's lingerie because he wants his girlfriend, Diane, to wear it for him. What is that? Let's think on that for a second. No, that is so weird. I <laughs> I could not stop with my notes in that moment. I was just like, this is this is so gross and disturbed. This is the worst thing. I'd rather watch the the nose thing several more times than think about him putting I, his mom's laundry and his girlfriend. I wanted to run out of the house screaming. It's like <laughs> absolutely not. What the fuck? What are you doing? Uh, oh my god and, and like he's and like it gets it gets weirder from there it does believe it or not because it does because the whole condom moment is the well, grossest part of the movie after that but so so i literally write down fucking what the fuck fucking hell <laughs> she agrees yes what? she has no problem with this like he says my, my 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 parents were going on a trip and i stole this out of her uh Luggage, and she's going to be so pissed at me when she finds out. But, and she says, sure. Yeah. I'll wear it. What the hell? But only if he wears a condom. Right. Because this is the early 90s. We're all still freaking out, and condoms are a new thing. And, yeah. Also. Fair uh, enough. This lingerie fits her perfectly. Yeah, which is really disturbing. Because she's a little thing. Yeah, well, she's, she's yeah, she's very. Suppose I guess Stu is dating somebody who has similar proportions to his mommy. Yeah, yikes! Yep, makes it. That's what makes it even worse. Oh, and it gets worse from there. Yeah. <laughs> so, Stu agrees and leaves to put the condom on in the bathroom. Why? I don't know. That is that is so <laughs> weird. <laughs> and he accidentally drops it in the toilet. Come on, man. <sighs> And, like, literally, I am, like, cheering as Dr. Giggles arrives on the scene to make things less weird. It's like, Giggles, kill him quick. I can't take any more of this. <laughs> this is so awkward. He lowers the temperature in the upstairs uh, to 65 degrees. A true monster, Dr. Giggles. Yeah, well, I mean, also, by the way, um, so the condom falls in the toilet. Oh, you, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It gets worse. Well, I, so, I want to get into that later. He, yeah, but. he can't. He can't just grab the condom out of the toilet. He's incapable of doing this, so he has to grab someone's toothbrush and use the bristle end to scoop out the freaking condom out of the toilet. Did he really use the bristle end? Yes, and it? then he oh puts the toothbrush back. <laughs> he puts it back, and then that's when he realizes, oh, I guess with all my dumbassness. I poked the hole in the condom, and then he just throws it out and carries on with it, trying to have sex. Well, he says, oh yeah, I God. hope she doesn't notice. But yeah, I, I, before this even happens, though, because we leave him in the bathroom right, struggling right. to get the condom going back out of the and toilet. Forth because she's like, where the hell is he, basically? Yeah, I, well, that's what she notices. It's all of a sudden cold because yeah. the Dr. Eagles is a monster and made the temperature 65 degrees in the house. Uh, so much. Diane comes out in full lingerie. 
Yeah. Meanwhile, by the way, Stu's brother is just downstairs. Yeah, little brother little is just downstairs brother. playing yeah. Dr. Mario. Like you have an eight-year-old just zombified. <laughs> uh, Giggles grabs her and says, It's lucky for you I figured out the cure for the common cold and then shoves the strongest thermometer in the world yeah. through the back of her head. Yep. And he says, leave it in for just a minute. So I'm like, all right, that's that's pretty good. I I, I was about to say, I kind of <laughs> like that one. <laughs> yeah. The, the, I'm like, I'm annoyed that it's a thermometer. Like, there's no thermometer strong enough to go through the back of someone's head. But then leave it in for just yeah. like, ah, he won me over. Again, ah. there's so many puns. And the majority of them, like 95% are horrendous, awful, and make you roll your eyes. But there are like that last 5%. They're like, actually, I kind of like it. <laughs> yeah. If we could just cut out 95% of this, I would have liked these puns. So, Stu fishes the condom out of the toilet Ugh. and just sprung a leak, and he hopes she won't notice as he's not wearing a condom. He's got a dick skin condom. He comes, he, <laughs> <laughs> he comes back into the bedroom, and he gets it gets so much more horrifying. Oh, my God. Yeah. He says, ever since I discovered my mom's Victoria's Secret catalog, I've been dying for this. Oh, my God, yes! I made that note too. What is that? No! <laughs> this kid's got such mommy issues. It's so bad. He goes under the covers. By the way, he is now wearing uh, jeans, no shirt, and he's still got his hat on backwards on his like s- sideshow bob hair. Yeah, and, and it's <laughs> weird too. Like I know it's supposed to be like dark in the room, but like there's no way this little, little girl... <laughs> Is making the same undercover proportions as Dr. Giggles. As six foot three Larry Drake as Dr. Giggles. Yeah. yeah, no, definitely not. Uh, he was just horny, man. He's just ready to go. <laughs> so, let's see. Let's see. Where am I at? Uh, so, he goes under the covers. Yeah, and it turns into like internal sunshine of the spotless mind all of a sudden. He's going like through a football field of covers. Yeah, yeah, through. and he discovers Giggles waiting for him with a scalpel, and Giggles says, I hope you brought protection. Yes. And then we cut back to Stu's little brother playing Dr. Mario with a joystick, which I still, once again, I yeah, don't I, think I, is I possible. Know. I don't know how you're doing that, yeah. And then we cut to Stu lying quiet and dead, I guess from blood loss of Giggles cutting off his dick. Is that because what? Because that's, yeah, that's where all the blood is coming from. I from must cross that area. Part. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we don't see it actually cut off, which would have been amazing. We just see the blood coming out through the I covers. wouldn't have wanted that. I don't know. <laughs> well, we, we only see dead corpse boobs. I don't know if I want to see that part, but okay. Uh, well, we, something. Uh, Giggles then goes downstairs and observes Stu's brother playing Dr. Mario. Yeah. He looks at it and says, terminal, and leaves. Yeah. <laughs> He's such a zombie brain dead from video games. What the hell? He's already dead. I don't need to do anything. It's basically just they're saying. I haven't rooted for a man to be murdered so fast in a movie in a long time. <laughs> this is Stu. It's like, no, he's got to be put down. He's wrong. He is awful, like right from the start. And it's it's amazing. that. But yeah, you're right. That, that it probably is the best part of the whole movie because it's so outlandish and cringy and insane. Horrifying. Yeah, it, Absolutely horrifying for all the wrong reasons. For sure. Like, I think my biggest reactions, like, just like, oh my God, what am I watching type of stuff is definitely that moment and then the first ending. Uh, well, uh, my favorite movie, has, my moment of the movie has not come up yet, but I, I that, that's yeah. probably the most insane moment of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> later on... Uh, Jen comes home, ditches her heart monitor, and after um, she's gotten t- and leaves because she's gotten tired of listening to her dad and stepmom nail each other. <laughs> they have quite vigorous and loud sex. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which, by the way, is like I. How long has the mom been dead? Good question. Not sure. Because it didn't seem like it was that long. Definitely doesn't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so then I can almost understand her. Right. But anyway, yeah. Carry on. Uh, <laughs> so, but Jen's dad uh, hears her leave, mm-hmm. figures out that she has left her heart monitor like in a fish tank, and is worried about her and leaves. Yeah. Jen's stepmom is furious that her husband is leaving the house to go look for his daughter. Yeah. And when he leaves, she goes to the fridge and scoops out a bowl of already half-melted ice cream. Yes. 
Yep. Notice what? that is- it's fresh out of the fresh out of the freezer and it's already melted. Yeah, and I'm like, but he hasn't cut the power because he uses electricity later. So what it's the hell? It's like we already Why did is it several melted? takes, and we don't have time for this to freeze up again. So we're just gonna go with this take. True, or there was I don't know. Yeah, doesn't yeah. make any sense. We didn't have a working fridge on set. Yeah, exactly. Uh- <laughs> it's it's and and it's like a tub thing. It's like one of those Edie's ones, right? It's, it's a decent sized thing, and she definitely eats uh, all of it. Yeah, she puts it into a large mixing bowl. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Giggles then sneaks in and straps her to a chair, unhappy with her eating all that sugar, and decides to pump her stomach. But he uses like a roto rooter, and well, he, he pumps all the ice cream out, and then he just starts like Is cleaning this the pipes, which the most rips apart her esophagus. Part? Is that the, the most inside. disappointing part for you? Like horror wise, like out of all these you- deaths, was that one of the most dis- bummer ones to you? Because it was to me. Yeah, well, you know, you wanted to see something more graphic, and all we see is blood in the. Uh, well, at first you just see ice legit cream. ice cream coming out. Right, but that's because that's all he's pumping. He's just pumping right. the ice cream. But, but then, then he, he uses pushes the rotor yeah, yeah, part exactly, and, and then you just see some red stuff coming into the ice cream. That's it. Yeah, and you don't even you, see you the tube see going out of her throat or anything. It's just. It was a. I was a letdown. It was just like mm. there's nothing here. What's scary about this? Like you literally see nothing but a bowl. Well, it's terrible. The good news is we're now going to get into my favorite part of the movie. Okay. The part that I laughed really hard, had to pause and take a walk. Is it the fun house? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> our next victim is Corrine, uh, who is chasing after Max, uh, Jen's boyfriend, into the house of mirrors after Jen discovers her making out with uh, Max. Yes. Sorry. I wrote down the wrong name. She's uh, just ready to pounce on any guy. She's a stereotypical slutty girl type of deal. And somehow she must have this one, whatever reason. Yeah, she really wants Max. Uh, so chases after him into the <laughs> house of mirrors, runs into uh, a wall, mirror wall, like an idiot. Yeah. And busts, busts up her nose. Like she's literally throwing herself at Max, but yeah. it's not Max, it's a mirror. Giggles appears behind her and tells her she probably just needs a Band-Aid. And when next we see Corrine, she has this giant novelty Band-Aid across her face, like from her above her nose yeah. to like her upper chest. Yeah. Giant thing, Huge. which is, uh, presumably suffocated her and it's strapped her to a wall. Right. Just incredible. Something you could only get at like a Spencer's Gifts, which does not exist at this point. This is something out of like a Zucker Brothers movie. Yeah, <laughs> it is this band-aid. nuts. There is no way you have this Band-Aid. Like, like if this had this been the movie, Killer Clowns kills from like Outer this, Space. Yes. If this had been the whole movie like this, these kind of kills, A+. plus Would have loved it. Right, again, it goes more to Killer Clowns or Dead Alive. Like it goes to that kind of thing, but that's not what it's trying to do. So, so this is, it just doesn't fit with everything yeah. else in the movie is I, I laughed so hard at the giant band-aid i loved it so much i was angry oh i i did i i, I probably should have had that reaction if it was that kind of a movie but since it wasn't it was more of a i hate you this is i like i just <laughs> was so mad at it i don't know i was pissed uh so then we uh later on you got the police leaving a message for jen's dad that his daughter is safe. She's escaped from the House of Mirrors. And I giggles. like this one. And they have her at the station. But, and then Giggles leaves a second voicemail yeah. uh, on the answering machine. It says, hello, I'm your new doctor, and I'm standing right behind you. I like that. And when Jen's dad turns around, Giggles slices him across his stomach with a circular saw and says, if you think that's bad, wait until you get my bill. I don't like the line. <laughs> I don't, don't get me wrong. I don't like the pun. But I like you like the setup. I the, like the, the setup. Like I thought that was actually kind of fun use of the okay. answering machine. Like I kind of dug that. Obviously, the follow through was terrible, but um, but yeah, I kind of I kind of dug that. Sorry. Well, then we got Officer Henry Magruder, <laughs> Magruder showing up to the house, played Magruder. by the guy who is in uh, the Untouchables. He has like he's so that the other cop who has like a fist fight with uh, Sean Connery. Oh wow! Okay, wow! Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't even think about that until you mentioned. It. Okay, yeah, yeah. Wow. 
he, he arrives at the scene, uh, Jen's, uh, looking for Jen's dad, and Giggle sneaks up behind him and shoves a scalpel on the back of his head. And he but survives Mag- a weird long time with that. Yeah, Magruder survives long enough to say, you owe me 35 years of sleep yeah. from when uh, he saw Kid Giggles pop out of his mom's body. Yeah. And he shoots Giggles, and Giggles in a lot of pain and uh, losing a lot of blood. And that's when he performed surgery on himself after that. Right, with lots of laughter. Lots of Mickey Mouse-like laughter. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> Uh, the next bit, you got uh, Jen's doctor coming to the police station, brings her back to her office. Jen has a lame nightmare I'm not going to get into. Yeah, we can skip that. Yeah, wakes up and tell, uh, the doc tells her she's going to be all right. And that's when Giggles appears uh, and stabs the doctor in the back with scissors and says, if I were you, I'd get a second opinion. Giggles loves sneaking up behind people. It's like his it go-to move. Yeah. And I have to say, though... Um scissors is like the weakest tool so far in the movie is kind of like really after well, everything we're going to we're going to scissors but all right the doctor agrees and yeah. and pulls the scissors out of his own back somehow yeah and stabs giggles in the leg and giggles is like uh doctor like you're being very unprofessional right now or whatever yeah that's right uh and then <laughs> the doctor grabs a pole out from underneath the examining table and like holds it up to giggles and giggles is like uh, how about a free uh, examination and pulls out a reflex hammer and they have a sword fight. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I swear to God, they have a sword fight. They do. <laughs> and it's like a legitimate, like, I like they actually have like movements, like fights. Like, I, I don't want to call it like a, like a, like a martial arts fight. Cause it's not, but you know what I mean? Like it's, it's really like a performative, like, Huh, 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 like thing with the they're swinging them like lightsabers yeah it's <laughs> so awful it's so bad uh yeah it's ridiculous it's but so i've also bad. kind of and then he has another pun too when he wins giggles i think if i remember correctly probably but i didn't write it down I'm good uh we can move on. <laughs> but then giggles grabs a blood pressure wrap and oh yeah he he pumps it up and have to choke the doctor to death he pumps it puts it around his face yeah which, you know, as someone who hates getting his blood pressure taken, I appreciate that. Do you? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I freak out like mom does, and I, like, I panic. Why? My blood pressure. I don't know. I, I just do. Oh. Because like, they're always, like, calm down, think of something pleasant, and I'm like, well, I better think of something pleasant real quick, and my blood pressure is way higher than it actually is if I take it at home. <laughs> um, I did not know that. Oh, God. Yeah. So then we move on to... Uh, <laughs> There's so much more, and I don't want to get into all. We've already gone way too long. Yeah, we have. Can we just go to the fi- the second to last final, and then the final? Can we just go to those two things and call it? Yeah, Officer Reitz, uh, Max, and Jen are trying to escape from Giggles' house. Um, Which is they walk th- the through most his waiting room. Insane! Th- like how <laughs> huge is this basement? It's quite quite large, right? Because uh, <laughs> it has a waiting room. A full-on hallway with multiple rooms and yeah. an operating room. It is yeah. intense how large... The home is not that big for a basement this large. Mm. Uh, they, they walk through the waiting room where Giggles has been storing his dead bodies. And yeah. Giggles surprises them, pretending all their to be out. another body. Yeah. Uh, he hits Max across the face with the golf club. Disarms Reitz and then full golf shots knocks him through a mirror. But the club is bent now. Should have used an eight iron. <laughs> yep. uh, Giggles gets into a fight with Reitz and sets fire to the house, which culminates in a giant explosion, which is nice. They, right. they legit blew up the house. Sure. Uh, and then we get to the final fight. Uh, the stress of the night was too much for Jen's heart, and she needs the operation immediately. A very badly burned Giggles appears and kills her doctors. Trying to do awesome powers there. <laughs> Yeah. He's very badly uh, Exactly. Jen shakes off the anesthesia. She's like, Somehow. Okay, all right. Yeah, because they fully gave it to her. That was like a full regular dose. Anybody who's ever had anesthesia. There's anesthesia, no way. You, they, they tell you to count back from 100 and you're out by like 98. Yeah. It's, it's over. So Somehow she's like, I'm okay. I'm all right. I got yeah. this. Or she's gets got up the and, worst anesthesiologist of all time. Could be. Yeah. She gets up and runs away after Giggles kills the doctors. Uh, and she hides in a supply closet. Uh, when Giggle finds her, she throws saline at his feet and then uses the defibrillator to electrocute him. Yeah. 
Giggle says, I don't feel well. I, Jen picks up yeah. Giggle's bizarre custom medical instruments and says, take two and call me in the morning. Doesn't he And stabs say, him in the chest. Is there a doctor in the house? Diggle, Giggles dies, but not before saying, is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> and these are tools, by the way, that apparently are of his own design. Somehow he designed and yeah, made they're, these. They're, yeah, they're custom. Somehow at some point. In like the night that he's been there. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> because clearly if it's his, his design, it's not his dad's design. Or maybe he was more involved. Ah, regardless, it's done. They look very clean and new. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's all I have written down for action. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Uh, I, I gave it a two and a half. I went two. I went. Two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it. There were a couple of times. Yeah. But. But. No. It's. It's so bad. Okay. <laughs> I don't even want to justify my score more than that. Yeah. This one is another short category. Uh, sidekick. Yeah. Uh, for a certain crowd, he's Mark from Roseanne. But for Tim and I, he's Doyle from Angel. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Uh, Glenn Quinn is playing Jennifer's boyfriend, Max, and he kind of sucks. R.I.P. Glenn yes. Quinn. Yes, yeah, yeah, R.I.P. But yeah, no, his character is awful. Um, yeah. They don't really um, give him much to do either. He's just supposed to be that kind of boyfriend. But otherwise, he's just a... I mean, it's weird because it's like at times they're like, he's understanding and he's... Like yeah, I'm, I'm I'm concerned, and she's not telling me anything, so I'm gonna be mopey. But then not, she tells him, he goes, "Oh, I'm so sorry." And he seems really cool, but then just cheats on her. Yeah, Max is bummed that Jen has ditched him at the fair. Yeah. Uh, even after she's told him why she's sad, she's just like adiosis without saying a word. Yeah. And um, so then Corrine shows up, and Corrine and her friend. And invite him to a drunken orgy that's being held in the music room of the high school. Yeah, I was like, where is this? <laughs> that's where kids love to screw, the music room of the high school. Well, you know, bands and art kids, let me tell you, I don't know. <laughs> that's right, it's one time band camp. <laughs> uh, Max tries to teach Corrine how to use a saxophone, and she uses this as an opportunity to show off her blowjob skills. Yep, really this goes at it. This pitiful seduction works on Max. Yeah, it's very graphic. Yeah. She really and they goes make down out on it. Yeah, they do. Su- surprisingly, that's all they do, considering how graphic that saxophone well, it's scene was. Because again, how small it, or close together everything. So they that that happens, and the friend of 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 uh, chlorine, whatever, Corey, the slut, right? Chlorine. Whatever. I don't. Know, whatever. Uh, yeah, the friend there uh, leaves, finds her way back to the fair who managed to run into our main character, tells yeah. her to follow her, come back to school, and they're still at the exact same spot making out. It's like, wow, all right. They've been in this one position making out there on the floor for like a while. There are like 20 kids in this music room just going at it. It is like the scene from uh, I, the jury, except there's yeah. no nudity. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, it was like the same thing when like the sheriff earlier in the movies breaking up like the where all the kids are parked at breeders hill right and it is a that was a sh- really small space that all these cars are on top of each other and they're just making out with each other i i'm sorry but breeders hill that was the chef's kiss of a of a name for a place i did enjoy for the teen makeout spot. yeah i also kind of enjoyed the uh, the sheriff or deputy or whatever, the old guy that, you know, bites McGruder. I actually kind of liked him in that scene. He was fun. Yeah. He was like playing some 50 song about it's time to go. Yeah. He was explaining the connection and how, and all yeah. that. And, and uh, his 49ers hat, like he had person, like I kind of liked him. Uh, <laughs> and my favorite part with Max is he's at the police station after the hall of mirrors stuff or whatever. Yeah. And he's sitting down talking to like the detective or whatever. I don't know. Right, he's eating Chinese food. Doesn't give a damn. And he says, "I don't know. Maybe he was dressed like a doctor. Maybe he always wanted to be one, but never got the chance." And then Max literally guesses, "Call me crazy, but I think he might be Rendell Jr." That's a good fucking guess, Max. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Did you notice too? And I was so focused on this, oddly enough, because maybe the movie sucks so bad. But yep. uh, the detective was eating Chinese food and yeah. could not eat with chopsticks. I didn't notice that. Oh, funny. my! it's great because every time he picks up food, it falls through. 
the chopsticks. Oh, I wish I so he that. never he never actually successfully gets any food in his mouth the entire time. And I'm like, this is amazing. Is it gonna happen again? <laughs> he does it. He misses it again. And it's like the whole like that was my most excited part of that moment is like him not being able to successfully eat Chinese food. Uh, anyway, the movie ends with Paul Rogers from Bad Company covering Bad Case of Loving You. <laughs> Which I was like, get the hell out of here. They really went for it. Huh? Oh, my God. And it's like, it's so off-putting, the, the song at the end. Like it's so... I, I had to sit and listen to it for like a couple of minutes. Like, did. Are they really doing that? Yeah, they're really It's doing It's this. such like a departure of everything you just saw. It re- almost reminded me of when you heard the Megaforce song. <laughs> like you're like what is this this doesn't uh, flow with anything i just saw like yeah so supposedly jennifer aniston and ashley judd auditioned for the role of jennifer uh, uh yeah lucky break for those two they didn't get hired i guess but jennifer aniston did leprechaun so it's not like it's that much better uh, was this when did leprechaun come out i can't remember it's got to be this close it's got to be only a year or so off. Oh, it came out this... Wait, that's not right. It's just 92. That is not true. What? Are we missing Leprechaun? No, no, no. No. You're you... not making me watch Leprechaun. <laughs> I will never watch that movie it's again. It's so not good. Now, the uh, later Leprechaun movies no, can no. be fun. Didn't come out until 93 in the United States. Okay, 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 okay. There was like a special screening in 92 in Battle Creek, Michigan, but didn't premiere until January of 93. Okay, I'm doesn't in the clear. Count. Doesn't count. There you go. Doesn't clear. There yeah. You. So she she didn't get this movie, but she bagged Leprechaun. Yeah, exactly. So she she got her own. And I th- I'm pretty sure it's like one of her most embarrassing moments of her career, she said to herself. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. She does not uh, want to talk about that movie ever. I don't blame her. It's pretty bad. Which is, it is to terrible terrible movie it's a terrible movie the the leprechaun movies don't get fun until later you know until they they find it's dead alive wheelhouse type of thing you know like you know leprechaun in the hood and all that kind of stuff mm. yeah we don't get a real breakthrough for ashley judd until heat 95 um uh, and then uh, they, the producers tried to get ted danson and matt frewer to play dr giggles oh my god God. Ted Danson was a real reach. Real oh, big reach. This is Cheers isn't ended yet. I think it ends in 92. Is it 92 where it ends? I know it's Let's... 90s, but I just don't remember how far in it goes. I feel like it goes a full decade and it started in 82. Uh, 93. It goes to 93. 93. He's still in okay, Cheers. So he's still in <laughs> Cheers, which is going to have like this epic conclusion all that guy everybody's like everybody's watching in america yeah there's no way you're gonna get ted dance that's insane yeah matt Fuhrer made sense matt that's, Fuhrer makes sense yeah yeah he, he held out for uh lawnmower man too uh <laughs> no i think he's doing uh honey i shook the kids around this time yeah somebody had like a really messed up one trying to like explain oh that can be 89 oh, his age bad. and honey they shrunk the kids and i was like oh my god he's younger is upsetting. Rick Moranis? No, Matt Fleur. Matt Fleur is was younger, younger than, you. than me, I think, than at least than I am now when he was in Honey Asher the Kids. Well, that that's the thing. I gotta now you have to investigate. No. Yeah, I really do. I didn't investigate, so I could be I could be told uh, some wrong information. Yeah, he was. Uh oh, he was thirty one. <laughs> he was significantly younger than me. <laughs> that's upsetting he does there's no oh, because you know i guess it's, it's 31 when he came out when, when, you're, 30, when you're when lo- you're made it when you're losing hair like that and it's maybe that's it ages you right or i don't know that's sean connery that's true that is upsetting man i was only like starting <laughs> to have my kids at that age dear lord <laughs> uh okay so then uh, let's see, the last bit I have here is a budget of seven million dollars. Oh, we didn't. Which I think we didn't they, wrap up with Sidekick. Oh, it's a one. Yeah. Okay. There's nothing there. I just, nothing I just wanted to make sure we didn't actually. Sorry. Um, I no, think you're right. Okay. Yeah, I, to be fair, I actually think I gave it a point five or one point five for Dougie Doug because he was somewhat competent. 
I do appreciate that we do have a horror movie with a black sidekick character that doesn't die. No, he dies. What? Yeah. Oh, you're right. He does get blown up. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Giggles he gets, gets blown him up. Uh, in the back with the I circular take everything saw. back. They you're both, right. You're right. Die. You're right. You're right. You want to give it a 1.5? I'm fine. I, we end up with the same score then. I did I did give it a 1.5. I had a final score of 7.5. Oh, I had a 7. How did you come up higher than me? I don't know. I, you know what? I think I ended up having something higher, oddly. Well, yeah, it was psychic. Well, one five. Yeah, I don't know, but I'm I'm fine with going seven. I really am. Yeah, that's what I gave it a seven. I'm cool um, that. which, yeah, okay, still puts I still puts it to where I want. It's still better than split second. So yeah, yeah, it is. Uh. Anyway, budget of $7 million. I think they spent almost all of that on the house and the opening credits, uh, which is a little over $15.3 million today. Final gross of just under $8.5 million <laughs> on a budget of $7 million, uh, which was over $18.6 million today. Dr. Giggles debuted at number seven at the box office in its first week of release. Uh, number one was Under Siege in its third week. I love Under Siege. Sure, man. Yeah. You know what else was like? You know what was number two of that week? What? Uh, Last of the Mohicans in its fifth week of release. Wow. Okay. All right. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. It's just too long. Isn't it a long movie? Uh, isn't that it's like great. double VHS back in the day movie? No, it's not that long. It wasn't that long. No, that's a disservice to do. It's it's under two hours, hour fifty two. Wow, I don't know why I have that thought in my head. I need to revisit. That. I will find you. Yeah, right. Come on, I gotta rewatch that movie. That's gotta yeah. be on the Res- list. Respect to the DDL. Uh, so what are we watching next week, Tim? Oh man, this was hard. This was really hard because I think I I listed you a few things I was struggling with to decide last time. Yeah. And and I was like, oh, I should go to one of them. But then I'm also really concerned now after some of these movies we watched that mm. uh, there's not as many good ones. And I, mm-hmm. I would like to save some for later. Sure. Um, understood. But there's also some bad ones that I know that I don't want to revisit that I'm not ready yet. So I'm going to go um, with The Vagrant. Oh, shit. Cool. Were you surprised by that pick? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Bill Paxton, That's, let's go. I, I mean, he's like very prominent in like the promotional stuff that I've seen. Uh, game over, man. Yeah, it's game, game over. over, right? Um, so I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm like from some of the stuff I looked into when I was looking into it. I am concerned, but also incredibly interested. So I'm really hoping a horror uh, comedy a I have never heard of until we uh, decided to do this podcast. Yeah, so I'm intrigued because it it seems to have some Sam Raimi esque um, camera really? angles that I can see oh. in some of the pictures, some okay. some of that zoomed in stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, zoomed in Dutch angles. Yeah, man. Yeah, I miss Bill Paxton. I Bill know Paxton's the best. he really was, and and, I'm, and I know already he's awesome and can sell the heck out of it. So I feel like if anything, it will be another Pet Cemetery too, right? There's somebody rewarding enough to make it worthwhile you know absolutely you, you don't get bored watching bill paxton exactly michael, exactly michael ironside is here i know that was another thing that that was kind of what put me over the edge to be like all right i think this is my pick mark mcclure uh i think he's the i think he's playing the vagrant that's jimmy olsen from superman the movie by the way i can't wait. uh colleen camp she was yvette in uh clue Ah oh, man, look at this! All right. Oh, cool! I'm excited. Right? You're welcome, America. I mean, we'll see. Oh. I, don't, I could regret all of this, but because <laughs> um, I have never heard of this movie before ever. Um, but it 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 looked kind of it looked fun. I really liked uh, a lot of the actors and actresses that I saw that were involved. And again, Bill Paxton, I love to. Is I wonder if this is one of the first movies too where it's like. The poster is like Bill Paxton. <laughs> it could be. And I'm like, really? In 92? Like Bill Paxton and this prominent? Like, because to me, I feel like he was a that guy until like Twister. Uh, 
Yeah, you know, I don't know. Like, man, he was. That's a good question, right? I feel like it was Twister that kind of put him more on like mainstream map. Yeah, because he was a co-star at that point. I mean, he's like a guy that everybody who like loves movies and uh, genre movies already loves him at this point, right? Exactly, because he's he's a that guy. Yeah, he's Aliens, Near Dark, Commando. Yeah, I don't even remember him. Commando, Terminator. Uh, but yeah, I think you're right. I think it's let's see. Isn't that crazy? He's definitely a that guy at this point. That's he's for sure. he's been around. He was around for so long before Twister. Like I remember seeing Twister in the movie theater and being like, I know him. Well, you know, it's like the third or fourth lead in uh, Apollo 13 was really good for him. Oh, too, like, you're that's a good point. Movie. That's a good. That's 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 a good point. That probably got him Twister. That probably did. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Good call. Love packs and miss him. Can't wait to watch. Yeah, cool, man. Tim. Thanks. I'm, you're. Look at that. You're welcome. All right. I'm excited. <laughs> All right. All right, man. That is it for us. Please share your support for the podcast by leaving a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, where I'm happy to listen to the show. Also, sharing is caring. Be sure to follow us on social media to get the latest show updates. Champ at gmail.com or find us by searching for the hashtag FilmRoadChamp. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Film Champ Podcast. Peace out, everyone. I got nothing. Dr. Pun. Oh, that was a letdown. <laughs>